Welcome back to Rotten and Forgotten. Today, we're gonna to be working on this Yamaha PW80. It doesn't run. I've worked on this machine before, last year or the year before. It belongs to one of my little buddies, and you know, spring is here. He's gotta get ripping, and we gotta get this thing moving, operating, hopefully. I'm not sure what's wrong with it. Last time I tried to kick it, it didn't want to run. Ooh, this might be a little low on compressions. It still doesn't want to run yet. So, we're going to do the right thing and dive into it. Make sure we got some gas in the tank, pull the plug out, see what that tells us, then work on that carburetor. Get some fuel down there. Now this does have oil injection. Some people take the oil injection off and you know run premix. I'm not sure what we're gonna do, but I know we gotta get started because it ain't gonna do itself. Let's dive into it. I suppose to get started, we can make sure there's some gas in the tank. This is a gas checker, also known as a zip tie. You can also check Elan chain cases, Elan gas tanks, all sorts of things with a long enough zip tie. And by golly, it is completely empty. So that's a great starting point. I suppose we gotta go find some gas. Now I'm guessing it leaked out of the carburetor. So that's where I think it went. I don't know, but that's not a good sign. <laughs> we definitely have issues. So now that we know we need gas, let's pull that spark plug out and check for spark. We confirmed their spark, so that's one thing off our list. We're going to clean up on this a little bit, throw our spark plug back in, make sure we don't get a whole bunch of dirt down the cylinder. It is a two stroke, it probably won't mind it, but it's not quite ideal. This thing is kind of dirty too. I guess a guy could have cleaned it up a little bit, but what's the fun of that? Who doesn't like working through some dirt? We're gonna blow some of the junk off this machine, try to clean it up a little bit before we dive into the carburetor and the fuel shut off and the air filter and all the other fun stuff. So my plan now is to pull the carburetor off, throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner and you know, let it bake. It looks like it was probably leaking out of the overflow or something. These things do have reeds too, and I have a suspicion or a hunch the reeds might be bowed out a little bit, because I don't think they've ever been out of this machine. So we're gonna get down to the carburetor, get that out, get her boiling, and then we're gonna check out those reeds, see what they look like. And then I suppose we'll jump into the oil side of things, see what that's looking like, and yeah, just get after it, I suppose. It's kind of fun too, because everything's miniature, and you know, kind of feel like a giant Especially with these big fingers, it just, just it's a blast. <laughs> By the looks of it, the gas leaked out of the carburetor. I'm guessing the float bowl was stuck open or something. We got a whole bunch of residue on the top of the engine here. The carburetor's kind of yellowed, so that's gonna have to come out of there. We're gonna work on getting all these screws and hoses out. There's a fuel line coming in, there's an oiler coming in, and then of course, you know, your breather there, and then into the reeds from there. So we'll throw you up on the tripod and I'll start, you know, taking things apart. We're gonna work on getting this carburetor off of here. It could be a little tricky. First, I'm gonna take a picture so I remember how all these cables and things go. That's one way to skin a cat, I guess. Carburetor came off our reed valve assembly thing. Not even sure if I can call it that. It's 
the breather line that goes into the reeds. Let's get this onto the off position. Where's that at? That'd be right here, I would guess. But I don't think there's any gas in it. And check for gas. And there's nothing in the tank. Who knows? Maybe he just ran out of gas and parked it. I couldn't tell you. I'm not sure exactly what went on. But I do know it's not running at the moment. Where did that line go, I wonder? Oh, the oiler line is unhooked now. Now I'm just sitting with the choke on and our throttle. And I'm pretty sure I can just unscrew this whole assembly, let those dangle here with the needle, and then I can get the carburetor into the ultrasonic and get the bacon. There. Now a guy can take a plastic bag and put all this in there. That's what I'm probably going to end up doing. But our McCooney carburetor is removed, so that's neat. I took some pictures of the carburetor. This overflow tube is stuck on there, so I'm going to leave that on when we throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner. We're using dish soap and warm water in the machine. And uh, if you haven't used an ultrasonic cleaner or seen them used, they're pretty awesome. You take a dirty carburetor like this, you know, and you just dump her in, click the button to the highest setting, turn on the heater, click the on button, and then find your lid. Not sure where that is, but we better find it. Voila, now you just let this bake. It's kind of noisy. It comes up on the camera kind of bad too, but you guys are used to it. It'll be fine. We're going to go over that Yamaha now and rip the seat off, check the oiling situation, see if there's any oil in it, decide if we're going to try to get the old oil out. I really don't know. Well, we better check it out while this thing bakes. Ugh. I'm guessing it's going to be a 10 millimeter. There's two bolts underneath the fender here. It's kind of a goofy setup. You know, if you really want to check your oil or add oil, you got to take bolts out. Of course, I'm sure it doesn't use that much oil and you get quite a few tanks of gas ran through it, but it's just, you know, kind of a hassle. There is a nice little sight gauge right here, but it's kind of stained and I'm not sure if you could even read it. There we go, pull this back. And voila. Oh, there's some left in it. Looks pretty good. Tastes pretty good. I think. Yeah, it tastes like oil. We'll call that good for now. Probably had some before I put the seat back on, of course, but yeah. I got a plastic bread bag to put the uh, needle and the choke into. That's just going to keep dirt and junk off of it while we keep operating on this machine. Something like that. And that's out of our way. Now I think we're going to pull the gas tank off so we can get better access down to the reeds get that area real cleaned off nicely and then we will remove them and see what's going on if anything it appears to remove the gas tank there's two bolts on each side and then this rubber tab thing that should just pull up maybe yeah a little rubber locky thing that's pretty neat take these bolts out and this tank should just remove itself basically there, tank's off. Get some better access to the machine. Where did that breather tube go? Mm -hmm. Down to the front. Interesting. That really didn't gain us much access to the reed valves, but at least it's a little brighter down here. I can kind of see something now. 
We're gonna use a little bit of carb cleaner on this, try to get some of this dirt and debris out of the way. Without using too much to get on our gaskets and stuff, because we want to reuse those, I think. Probably don't actually want to, but we gotta do this cheaply, so I think I will. We've got some options here. Fancy options. Harbor Freight options, actually. This one's too big. I really never thought I was gonna use this thing, but this might just be the tool of choice. It doesn't fit in there worth a hoot. That's pretty neat. Maybe the flathead side will bite in a little more. I think I'm going to try to pull this choke off to help me get some more access in here. Remember when I said it's kind of fun working on little things? This is the not so fun part because the mitts can't fit in places they should. You basically need to be a child and children don't know how to work on these things because I don't even know how to work on them. So yeah, the joys of it. There we go. Got the choke removed. We're gonna relocate that for the time being. Trying to do some gentle prying, but there they went. I didn't poke them too bad there. Ooh. Oh yeah. Dirty, but they're holding tight. So that's good. They're not curled up at all. They look pretty darn good, to tell you the honest truth. But I wanted to dive in here just to make sure. You never know with these old two strokes. Sometimes the reeds will curve up a little bit and then you're losing the horsepowers and the kid needs all the horsepower he can get, obviously. The gaskets look good, so I'm not too concerned about that. Probably should have picked some up, but I didn't. So there's that, of course. The carburetor's done bacon. Let's see what it looks like now. Ooh, she's hot, but it's a lot cleaner. Like a lot, a lot cleaner. Ooh, there's definitely some old gas in there. That is really gross. It is really hot too. Let's see if we can get this drop line line off there. It appears to be stuck. There it goes. I broke it. That's pretty nifty. Should have used pliers on that. Looks like it's gonna be a little bit shorter now. Gonna take the bowl off now, and we're gonna see what we're dealing with. A Little bit nervous. I'm guessing there's gonna be some varnishing in here. Not sure. Ooh. Doesn't look too bad. A Little bit of dirt and debris in there. Nothing too crazy. Throw her back in the drink. We've got ourselves some brass floats. So that's pretty cool. It is a Makuni carburetor, if you're wondering. We'll see if we can get these floats out of here. Floats are off, the needle's out. Yeah. I do have a kit for it. It's an all balls carburetor repair kit. So I think it was like 12 bucks or something on the internet. I better take a few more pictures before I get too carried away so I can remember how this thing goes back together. 
Never hurts to take too many pictures because you'd be surprised how fast these kind of things a guy forgets. We're going to have to try to get this old gasket off, but I better let it bake again. I think that'll help us tremendously. So there, carburetor's ripped apart. Let's throw the lid on and let her bake again. The carburetor's done baking. You can see what we're working with now. She's still pretty darn hot. Wow, yeah, that ultrasonic cleaner really made her come around. There we go. I'm going to put a drop down line back on there. If I can get it to fit. But it's really stout. Whew. That could probably be replaced, but you know, it's really not that important. It's just your overflow tube. So we're just going to leave it as it is. Something like that. Perfect. Down she goes. Now we can listen to make sure the float's working in there. Sounds like it is, so we'll just call it good. I'm going to throw a new seal on the top of this thing. She's pretty gross. If I can get it out, I think I can though. So this is the top of our carburetor. And you can see that old gasket there is looking pretty darn nasty. So we're going to let her soak in the ultrasonic cleaner so we can get it removed and put the new one on so everything seals up nicely on the top side of things. That old gasket was a struggle. It took me quite a while to get it off, but we got the new one on so it's ready to go back in, I think. We got to put our, uh, you know, throttle back together and the choke lever back together, but other than that, yeah, let's get her done. <laughs> The throttle body's put back together. Let's see if it moves. That it does, so that's great. Now let's make sure our oiler's working. It should fill up as we kick it over. Probably have to pull the spark plug out though. That's gonna help a wee bit. Well, it definitely is filling a little bit, but yeah, it's definitely not fastest. Which isn't surprising, you know, it's just a little two cycle. We got the carburetor together. Now we're just going to put everything back where it was when we started. So that ought to go good. We know the oiler's working. It's adding its way up there. I will run a little pre-mix in it just to be safe right off the bat. Maybe once I get this carburetor on here, I'll kick her over some more until that plug's completely full and the air bubbles out. I suppose we can put our choke back to where it's supposed to be as well. Here. 
There's a round O-ring on the inside of that carburetor. It looked pretty darn good when I checked it, but you want to make sure that's pressed all the way back so you're making a complete seal and you don't get any air leaking by. Otherwise, you could run lean, I think. Or, yeah, lean it would be, because you'd have too much air in the fuel mixture. and Yeah, it's just not good. Make sure that thing's seated all the way back. Life will be a lot better if you do. We're going to check on our air filter, see what it looks like. Haven't been in here for a while. Make sure there's no mouses in it. I don't think they can get into it, but you never know. There. What do we got going on? It's pretty clean, actually. We'll blow it off quick. Throw her back together. Oh, back in this goes. Now we can spill some gas and just make sure it's working. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's on, that's not off. We spilt a lot of gas there. Smooth. I'm gonna throw a little bit of air in the tires because I know if I do fire this thing up, I need to ride it around in circles and I'll be too excited to remember to do this. So. We're just gonna do it now before, you know, the excitement happens. We had the gas on for a little bit. It's not leaking yet, it doesn't look like. So that's good. Oh, I still need to tighten up that choke. I almost forgot that. Full choke. We're on the run position. Let's see if it's gonna start. What are the chances, 50-50? I think I'll go 25-75. 25 it fires right up, 75 we rip it back apart. Uh-oh, not sounding very good yet. We're dumping fuel out. There's a good chance we're already flooded. No way. Not that fast. Bah! <sighs> Whew. That was a cough. And we're dumping more fuel out. Neat. Maybe she needs a little more. Too much choke. Whoa, 
Come on now. It's most definitely oiling enough. Sounds pretty good. It's opening up. My idle's just not quite there. May need to adjust a little bit, but I'm pretty happy. There's two strokes smoke in the shop again, too, so that's always great. I died again. But wide open throttle and uh, she's back. So good. Not really dogging her, we should have downshifted. Oh, there's my hat. This thing's running pretty darn good. I got some more idling to work out on it, but I mean, I think it's gonna work. There's our little better. We got that idle down. There is some stuff rattling around in the exhaust, so I'm gonna have to take a look at that, but. <laughs> 